serial killers from the likes of Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, John Wayne Gacy, Jack the Ripper, Ed Gein, Anthony Soule, and others have been an object of endless fascination for people throughout history. And for good reason. You can look at these people's backgrounds, their childhood. You can look at their physiology, their psychology, nature versus nature. You can look at the historical aspect of it. These are fascinating cases. A debate that has emerged over the years is who was the first, not just in terms of folklore and myths and legends, but in terms of historical sources. And this name that has come up is one that you may not have heard of, and that is Liu Peng Li. One day as I was falling down the sort of internet rabbit hole of random things I was looking at, I came across this article about this guy named Liu Peng Li, and I said, who the heck is this guy? And it turns out he was probably the very first serial killer in world history in terms of recorded sources. But the sites that I was looking at didn't seem to be very reputable sites. In places like Reddit and the Historian's Hut and various personal blogs. And I just wanted to look for myself. Who was this guy? Was he really the world's first serial killer? What does the actual source say about this guy? Not just in English, but also the Chinese sources as well. I wanted to go to the primary sources and see if this was true. Before we really get started, let's talk about the definition of a serial killer. Generally speaking, it is someone who's killed three or more people kind of in regularly spaced intervals for over a month and even for longer. Usually it's done for some sort of psychological gratification, whether it be uh, sexual or otherwise, maybe even just for fun. There also seems to be a predictable pattern of behavior in the way that they choose their victims or the way that they carry out their work, so to speak. So let's talk about Neil Pung Lee. So who was Neil Pung Lee? Well, he dates back to the Han Dynasty of China, and this is way, way back in history. Liu Peng Li was a prince of the Han Dynasty, the third son of Prince Liu Wu, which made him the grandson of Emperor Wen of China. So the grandson of an emperor, it's a pretty big deal, right? As the grandson of an emperor and coming from a family of wealth and privilege, he was granted various allotments of land and he was allowed to sort of do whatever he wanted with that land and kind of the people on this land. And in the years following his death, it was recorded by historians that he was an extremely cruel man and he employed extremely cruel tactics to kind of subjugate people and also just mess with people for fun, even to the extent of murdering them. A fascinating aspect of the story is that he did not do this alone. He was known for traveling with a band of marauders, for lack of a better word. Him and his friends and his slaves even would go out and just slaughter tons of people and his supposed body count was over a hundred. Over a hundred souls is what the actual source says. Instead of sourcing from these personal sites, I jumped onto Wikipedia as you do and I looked at the sources on Wikipedia and I found this thing called the Book of Han. But I can't find the English version so I start looking around for the Chinese version because this is a Chinese story told by Sima Qin, the records of the Grand Historian and the Book of Former Han, and I start looking. All of this goes back to really one single paragraph. That's all that's written about this Prince of Jidong. I find it on this site called ctext.org. Sure enough, there it is. He's arrogant and cruel and would go out on marauding expeditions with tens of slaves or young men who are hiding from the law. So these are outlaws that he's traveling with. So like marauders, like I said before, murdering people and seizing their belongings for sheer sport. Confirmed victims exceeded 100. And these murders were known across the kingdom. So people were afraid of leaving their homes at night. Eventually, the son of one of his victims accused him to the emperor, and the officials of the court requested that Liu Peng Li be executed. However, the emperor could not bear to have his own nephew killed, and Liu Peng Li was made a commoner and banished, and his sovereignty was abolished, and his land was reclaimed by the emperor. So, there you have it, right there. You have the Chinese and the English put right next to each other. The translation is not bad. It is actually attested by historical records. So why was Liu Peng Li going out and doing all this? It seems like he was doing it for fun, for sport, 
for the game, for the love of the game, you know? And this is a sort of classic serial killer trait. He has no feelings about this sort of thing. It seemed to be all about the power, the fact that he could do these things and the fact that he could get away with all of these crimes. But was there any sort of sexual gratification to this? Who knows? The sources don't say, and we can't assume that. Was there sort of abnormal psychology going on there, some sort of psychological problems? Well, again, the sources don't say, but it seems, at least that, seems pretty obvious to me. You could sort of make a case that times were more cruel back then. People did this sort of thing more commonly, silencing enemies and things like that, but these common people don't seem like enemies. It is famously said that history is written by the winners and it is written with a narrative in mind to put stories together and put trends together to make an overall story arc and to make sense of lots of events. So there is that aspect of it that may cast all this into doubt. And remember, this is the second century BC, over 2000 years ago, and we have a record of it, which would make him, as far as I know, the earliest known serial killer. And as we mentioned before, history is written a little bit differently here in China. You have Confucius, who wrote his own annals of history, and then you have Sima Qin, who wrote the records of the Grand Historian, which was actually inspired by Confucius's writing and sort of modeled after that. And Sima Qin later came out and said himself of the style of writing, he talks about how it's sort of a moral guide to living. It's not simply a historical record. He wrote about the work of Confucius and said, it distinguishes what is suspicious and doubtful, clarifies what's right and wrong, and settles points which are uncertain. It calls good good and bad bad, honors the worthy, condemns the unworthy, etc. And he modeled his own work after this type of work. So you notice throughout the records of the Grand Historian, you see morality tales coming up. So there is something to think about here. Is this actually true or is this sort of a morality tale? Or was it exaggerated? There's a lot of doubt. It's possible that it happened, but not to the extent of over a hundred souls were lost. And I mean, who knows? It is a classic problem of early history where you simply don't have a variety of sources talking about what's happened, you usually will have one source. So it's up to you. Do you think that this actually happened and in the way that it was recorded? Or do you think it may have been exaggerated? Was it toyed with? Or was it simply made up? Let me know in the comments. And that is where we are gonna end today's video. Thank you all very much for watching. Let me know if you liked the video. Smash that like button and check out my Patreon if you feel like throwing me a buck or two. And um, yeah, again, thank you all very much for watching. See you all.